Hello, my crafty friends. It's Tiffany here with another paper crafting tutorial for you. So I was scrolling through YouTube like I love to do when I am not too busy, which isn't very often, but <laughs> um, I saw, I came across this project from Liz. It's called Liz the Paper Project, her channel, and I'll link that below, but I was really inspired by it. She had a couple that looked like they were made from some old vintage wallpaper or something like that, and I thought they were so pretty. She also did some that she made look like, oh, well, I guess she has some printables in her shop. I think it was her. <laughs> I watched a couple of different ones. And it looked like she had sewn a bunch of, you know, it looked like an old quilt or something. And, and she used that and it was super cute. So I got out a, a piece of paper that I have had in my stash forever to make this one. But um, I actually went to Joanne's and found all these gorgeous papers um, that just looked so vintagey and so beautiful. I had to make some of these paper bag clutches for you. Now there are quite a few paper bag clutches. Well, there are a few out there that people have done, but um, Liz actually uh, used it as like a expanding little file folder type thing. I'm not sure if that's what you'd call it, but anyway, this these are all made just using some paper bags just regular old brown lunch sacks and now i got these from walmart i did um get some from dollar tree and they are not i am not happy with them and i love dollar tree normally for you know inexpensive craft supplies but this is kind of what they look like some of them and like they're not straight the corners are not square this one's got a big you know hump in it right there but so don't yeah i wouldn't recommend the ones from dollar tree but of course use what you have if you already have some you can make do if you're not a perfectionist like i am but these are the ones from walmart and they look so much better so these are let's see if I, let me show you the bag instead of measuring them Okay, here's the bag that they came in, and so they're five and an eighth by three and an eighth by ten and five eighths. So they're just regular sized. They do have some a little bit bigger ones, some giant ones, which I want to try. But yeah, the I think this cost two dollars and fifty cents for a hundred sacks, and so yeah, I've got a lot of sacks. So I'm going to be doing maybe a few more projects for you with these paper bags. I'm definitely going to do one with a journal in it, maybe a junk journal type thing. So, oh, I thought they turned out so pretty. I'm so excited about this. I actually, this is, this one is really dear and special to me. I used some gold thread and stitched the edges of it. And I, I did see somebody else that used gold thread and I, I can't remember. I'll have to look again and see what her name was, but she did some like Christmassy ones that were so pretty. And so, and then I did this pretty gold Brad from We Are Memory Keepers. It's like a wide, wait, let's see if I have it right here. Uh, wide eyelets, sorry, they're not Brad's, they're eyelets. We've got the hole in the center, but I thought that turned out so beautiful. Okay, so here, is what I'm talking about. It's an expanding organizer. You could use it for so many things. You could use it to hold ephemera, of course. You could make a little set of pretty greeting cards that matched your paper. I think that would be so cute for a beautiful gift for someone. You could tuck in maybe some washi tape that's wrapped around a card or some ribbon wrapped around a card. I think it would be great if you use coupons to organize your coupons, your receipts, anything like that. Also, I was thinking it would be fun to just, you know, organize. 
some of these kind of things just slip them all into the pockets but this is an easy little project so i'm going to show you how to do it i love it so much i've used different um, different kinds of paper i did tea dye this paper but that is quite a process and so i'll show you some other options for the insides. Well, maybe I'll keep this here and I'll show you. This is another one. Oh, this one. This one's my other favorite one. So I actually did some fancy, I tried out some fancy stitches on my sewing machine and I love how that turned out so much. Is that so adorable? And this paper, oh my goodness. It's from Joann's and I got it on sale. I add some little tabs to this one. I thought that turned out really darling. Uh, I did mine a little bit differently. I actually added paper, pretty paper to the inside too. And she, I didn't, haven't seen other people do that. So you certainly could just um, have it as a little wallet and it wouldn't, you wouldn't have to do the, the little papers inside for organization, but um, some people will just stitch, stitch it close and just have it be a little basic wallet. This one I added a little, I just cut out a cut apart from this paper and stitched it on to make it a little pocket. These are, all these papers are from Joann's except for I think this polka dot one I already had in my stash. But I love this little floral vine it totally gives me vibes of vintagey wallpaper and I have uh, painted um, sealed my paper just the out the papers on the outside with some Mod Podge but I used a matte Mod Podge so it's not glossy but it just has a tiny bit of a sheen to it I don't know if you'll be able to pick up on that but I love it it just really yeah I can't tell if you can see that through the camera or not but oh, I think it, they turned out so pretty I love the stitching and now maybe not everybody has a sewing machine but it totally adds so much to it let's see well we could probably just go ahead and get started but welcome to my channel or welcome back if you're new here and if you are enjoying this video please please like it and subscribe and share this video with your friends or on your Pinterest it will really help me it'll help my channel to grow help this video to be seen so yeah let's Go ahead and get started on the tutorial. I've got some papers here, some of those gorgeous papers. Now, let's see, I've got a couple different lines here Woodland Grove and Gingham Gardens. I thought they looked really pretty together. Let me grab my sacks. Here's my sacks. And what first we need to do is just open up our paper sacks and I did pick out the the ones that look the nicest to me some of the corners are a little bit not perfect so yeah you can look through your bags and find a good one all you need to do and this is going to be a little noisy the crinkling of the bag so I apologize for that but we want to open out the sides what I like to do is turn on its side and make sure that let's see. So I like to take it where it's folded in and just try to fold it out on that exact spot like that and then come up to this little bottom of this little triangle right here right there and try to you have to stick your hand back inside there push that little corner out let's see I might be <laughs> too close to the camera okay push that out with your finger and then try 
trying to make it nice and straight there. Okay, so what we're gonna try to do is pop it out. Oh, let's, oh whoops, that one's already glued. Let's see if I've got one here. So we wanna try to make it look like this to pop out these corners right here. So it is a little fiddly, but just do your best and it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna do the other side. Just hold that back the other way. And then I'm gonna stick my hand back in there and get the little point of that triangle. Okay, fold that up and then I'm gonna kind of pull those two edges and try to, I need to move my chair, okay. And it is a little bit tricky. And like I said, if you're not a perfectionist and you're not worried about perfection, then <laughs> it's all okay. And this one's got a little bit of a fold there, but that looks pretty good. Actually, maybe I'll see. I do like these corners to be pretty school. Uh, I don't know the word square, but let's see if I can pop that out just a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Okay, that looks great. And then I'll take my bone folder and go over that. I'm just going to go over that so it's not so bulky. Okay. Looks okie dokie. Now what we want to do is measure our bag with our paper against our paper okay so this this is going to fold up here and then oh first we need to fold that up Oops, flat against the other one like that and i'm going to put a little glue on that And get my glue to come out. That's always the struggle. Okay, and flatten that out just like that. And that's going to be our flap, of course. So that's what's going to make the base of our little wallet that will go up and that will fold down like that but first let's see I guess I need to decide where I want this to fold down and I do like to have a little bit maybe a half an inch where this corner or a uh, half an inch of space here I um, I think it looks better rather than having it up like this I like to have it down like that. So I'm going to fold this. Hopefully that's kind of straight. And then I'm not going to fold this part yet. I'm going to measure my paper against it. And on this side is what I used. If you're using the same paper, obviously you can use whatever paper you want. But I used the back, this top piece here on the flap. I thought that was really cute how it had the words on it. So I'm going to try not to use that part. So I'll just kind of use the bottom section here. And all I'm going to do is hold it up where I want it. And I do like a little bit of the bag to show so that you can see that, you, that it actually was made from a paper sack, paper bag. I want just the maybe... It's probably about an eighth of an inch to show around around your edges. 
All right. And this is going to be the whole, let's see if I can open this up and show you. So I guess I can't really lay it down and open it up, but hopefully you can see that. But so not, not the flap, but that whole back side. So that covered this whole piece at one time. And I'm just going to hold it where I want it and then make a little mark where I want to cut it. So tricky leaning over my camera here. But so a little mark right there and a little mark right here. Right about there. All right, and I will go cut that really quick. Okay, I've got that cut. And it, if you want to know the measurement, it's about eight and a quarter by eight and a half. Let's see, I think. Yeah, that's right. And of course, you'll probably need to measure your bag unless you, yeah, I think some bags are different sizes. And of course you can use any bags you want. You can, I mean, you can use different sizes of sacks also. Got a little pencil mark here, and I don't want to use the. Here it is. I need a good eraser for that. I don't want that there, of course. Let's see, I don't see the other little pencil mark, so I think we're good. Now, before I glue this on, if you want to Mod Podge, this is the best time I think to Mod Podge. You can do it after you put it on your, after you glue it on your bag, but it does get more wrinkly. And so, let's see if I have something. Okay. I have just a pad of paper and I just like to use the back of it as a working space so I don't get Mod Podge obviously all over my table. I need to grab a brush. Like I said, I like the matte Mod Podge and you can actually get little containers of it at the Dollar Tree. Okay. And some people, yeah, I think most people that do, have done this just Put it on their back and then Mod Podge or seal it with whatever they're using to seal with. But yeah, I just, I don't like mine to be wrinkled up. And once you glue it in certain spots, unless you've got like every single square inch glued down perfectly, it's going to bubble up in some places where it's not glued down, if that makes sense. So. I like to just do it ahead. Of course, some techniques people kind of do, a, let's see, what would you call it? Where they, where they rip pieces of paper and kind of uh, like a collage, I guess. So they're just adding kind of ripped bits of paper all over it type of thing. And so they're, so they're mod podging as they go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Spot there. And then you can dry it just really quickly just using your hair dryer. Let's see if I can get mine plugged in right here if it'll. And I'm going to stick this up. I'll probably want to use it again. So a little hint is just to stick it in to a sandwich baggie so it doesn't dry up on you rather than having to wash it out every time you use it. So I've got my just my hair dryer here. I'm going to tune it on low or a cool setting. And this might be loud too. I apologize. Oh, let's see. Oh, maybe. Sorry, I know 
know that seems silly for me to do that on camera, but I just wanted to show you how fast it dries. Like it's like, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds. That's pretty much dry. I might do 10 more seconds off camera. I just had a couple of spots that were, had a little bit more on them. So that looks really good. And you, yeah, you probably can't see it, but it really does make it look and feel like old wallpaper. I love it so much. Alrighty, so that piece is done. And then I might go ahead and stick that, make sure it's good and dry, give it a couple minutes. And then I would stick it like underneath here to let it, um, make sure it's nice and flat. But yeah, I'll just do that while we work on our, the piece for our flap. Oh, isn't that so cute? I didn't know how much I would love it until I put these together. <laughs> Seriously. <gasps> so pretty. I love just the little dainty blossoms. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, so here's our little bag. Now this is the tricky part, is doing the flap. And what I like to do, let's see. Okay, and that's the side that I used for, let's see. Where did I use that? Oh, oh, I used that. Sorry, I used a piece of that on the, the other, other one. Which one was it? Oh, it was the one with the butterfly. So I used that, a piece of that for the top there. Yeah, I guess that's it. Just a little scrap for that flap. I think that rhymed. <laughs> okay. Uh, so where did I just put that? There it is. Ta da! Okay, so we want a bit of the edge showing again. So I'm going to just tuck one end of my paper under the flap about with about an eighth. I don't know if that's more of a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch right there, but that's showing on the bag. But uh, well, actually, hmm, let's see. Got my fold here. I have to think about this for a second. Actually, I think I'll do it this way. I'm going to put it underneath my flap and make sure I've got it. So you can see my fold line here. So I'm going to bring it down just that eighth of an inch. Okay, and then try to make it straight lined up on this other side. I think that looks pretty good. And then, so I've got it in place, then I'm just going to trace it. I probably should have, well, I'm going to scooch it over. So it's yeah, then I can't see it. Okay, sorry. I can't see with my glasses from that far away. All right, that looks good. So here's my fold. Got about an eighth of an inch there. And then... To the other side. Bring that up a tiny bit, and I'm going to trace around it. Okay. Scissors. And I have been using my paper trimmer to cut this, at least this big line. But I decided to do it with scissors because, and just follow that line that I've traced exactly because your paper bag isn't necessarily as straight as what your paper trimmer would trim it out. So let's see how that looks. We're gonna have to do a little more fiddling with it probably, but that actually looks pretty good. 
to erase that pencil line for sure. But then I just kind of trim a tiny bit at a time. You don't want to trim too much. So I've obviously got to trim, let's see. I think I'm going to go with, well, hmm. I think this side looks pretty good. I think I need to trim that side a little bit and yeah. I, I'm going to use my paper trimmer for that. Let me grab it. I just about tripped and fell over my hair dryer because I had it stretched out with the cord. Oops. I want to make sure it is pretty hard to cut these little edges straight. I'm just going to take. See, I'm going to put it up to this line. Of course, you might not have this paper trimmer, but just to take that much off. So let's see how that looks. That looks really good, actually. So I think it's a little bit longer than what we need, though. I might just trim that back a bit. I'm going to try to trim this just a hair on this side. Just using my scissors. And just the tiniest, tiniest bit. Okay. And yeah, you don't have to do a perfect just because I tried to make a perfect. Got some pencil on that part. Got pencil all over it. Okay, I'm gonna trim this big and a tiny bit. Because I've got it longer than it needs to be. And like I said, just a little bit at a time is better because you can always cut more off. You can't add back onto it. Okay, I think that should do it. That's probably the hardest part here. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, so we can put a little Mod Podge on that. First, I better erase those pencil lines. Can fast forward it, of course. Okay. Probably paint this off camera really quick so you don't have to watch that since you already watched some and I've got that all finished and I'm going to ink my edges a little bit that's totally optional but gives it that vintagey feeling I like to just do it a little bit though I just kind of run my ink my little pad across the edge of it I don't put a ton on it But you can see how it kind of makes that edge stand out more. Makes it look finished. I love that look. I don't like it to look grungy and dirty though. This paper is so beautiful. I don't want to overdo it. So feel free to fast forward if you're pretty familiar with inking might put a touch more on this because it's more plain more simple I shouldn't say plain but and that goes pretty quick sometimes I'll kind of go more like up and down and sometimes I'll just kind of drag it across that. And this is a uh, vintage photo distress ink by Tim Holtz. I also have the tea dye 
Distress Oxide that I love that make that's much lighter. I used in, let's see, I don't know if I showed you. Which one was it? This one. Rather than using tea dyed paper, I just used some beautiful linen paper. And I'll link that below. I'll, maybe I'll show you how I did this, but I, let's see if I can get this to show up on camera. If you can see that paper inside there, it's got a linen texture to it. It's so pretty. It's just white. But then I kind of crumpled it in a couple of spots and inked the edges with the the tea uh with the tea dye. And I'll try to link those below. I can link this paper below too. I love this paper. It's nice and thin, but it's still very strong. So I don't necessarily want to use a heavyweight paper inside here because I, it would be too bulky. And you don't have a whole lot of space to work with. And I do make a little gusset in here in the bottom. But yeah. Oh, also I was going to show you. I, I didn't, I don't know if I really if this showed up when I was flipping through it, but I did, I used some of that linen paper here and I dyed it with some writ dye, some light pink writ dye. And then I sprayed some gold spray on it. I'm not sure what that's called. I'll see if I can find it. But is that gorgeous? Oh my gosh. I'm so happy with the way that turned out. So pretty. Such a beautiful treasure. <laughs> a gift to give someone. A teacher or for your mother. Alrighty. Back to the project. Now we're going to, okay, let's see. If you want to, this is optional also, but there's kind of a little circle notch here. Gosh, that's not very straight there. I don't love that, but I won't worry about it right now. And I do have a two inch circle punch. I use this a lot for notches and things like that, but I I would like for, whoops. I'm going to tuck that underneath there for a second. Uh, I want to have a notch in my, the front of my paper. Okay, so I want it to match here. I'm going this way. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and Kind of following along where that already is, just punch it out a little bit. Ooh, gosh, goodness gracious, that did not work. Ooh, hmm, I haven't had that happen before. Okay, let me try one side at a time. I don't know if that'll make a difference or not. Gosh, I think I need to sharpen my punch or something. Hmm, sorry about that. Well, <laughs> darn, maybe I won't try to do that. I don't know how, I don't think it would look good if I just punched the paper. I have to cut it with my scissors because it's kind of messed up now. We just roll with the punches and do our best, right? Punches, get it? I didn't even do that on purpose. <laughs> Okay. The bag isn't going to show too much because we'll have the paper over it. Hopefully that will look okay. All right. Now, this is actually, okay, so we want this on the, not the side that the flap is on, on the back side. I'll probably just punch that after I get this glued on. And for working with this paper bag, I highly, highly recommend getting some Fabri-Tac glue. This glue 
is so good with working with like thinner papers. I use it in my, oh boy, that looks terrible. Whoa. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cover that up for sure. Uh, anyway, <laughs> works great for thinner papers because it doesn't wrinkle up. Um, yeah, it doesn't, and also, I did use my art glitter glue with at attaching my some of my papers to the bag and you can see like you can see where the glue is underneath like I don't know if I can find oh here it is um you can kind of see lines ridges where it's um like I've gone over it with the paper with the bone folder and it makes kind of a ridge because that glue is dry so quickly. I love this glue. Fabri-Tac is the best. I'll link that below if you want to get some. It is kind of expensive, but it is worth it. I use it a lot for thinner papers. Let's see. Where do, are we going now? I think I'll, I think I'll punch that after I glue it on. And you don't have to have you don't have to have a notch in yours. This adds a little bit of extra cuteness. Let's see if we can get this glue to come out. There we go. And this is a more, it does come out more gobby, more globby, but it's going to be fine. You'll think, oh, that's kind of a mess, but yeah. It all works out in the end. We are kind of close to those edges. And I'm going to go down the center a little bit to make sure that's all adhered. And there we go. Don't get this on your table, though, on your wood table. I've learned my lesson about that. Not good. Oh, I think I need a little bit here. And I put my lid on as soon as I'm done because it kind of oozes out. Alrighty, now we're going to just try to center this, having a little bit of a edge around. And keep in mind that this folded edge might not be totally straight. So get it straight with the other edges first. And then you can fix that folded edge. Alrighty, that looks very nice. I'm gonna use my bone folder to kind of work that glue in, make sure it's really stuck down. And there we go. That's our outside section. Now that it looks actually pretty straight. I folded it pretty straight. I'm going to push this side down just a hair. Okay. And now we've got our flap. Let's see. It's probably a good idea to let those dry, you know, another 15 minutes or so after you Mod Podge. But I'm just going to go ahead and go with it. That looks good. Oh, uh, let's before we glue this one on, let's make another one for the inside. So, grab my scrap here. We can use that as a template. And it's going to be going the other direction. So it's going to be going this direction. So I'm going to flip it over this way. Let me look at this one. So, I have to think about this for a second. Yeah, that's right. That's how I want it. Okay. I don't know if you saw that, but. And yeah, it's not totally, the lines are not straight for sure. But we're just going to go with this because it seems to 
work on the bag. Of course, your bag is not straight at all. <laughs> well, maybe a little straight. I'll just take my scissors and cut that out. erase my pencil marks you probably don't need to totally erase your pencil marks if you're going to erase your I mean if you're going to um, ink your edges but oh let me see if that fits before I ink it oh this way I need to trim that edge a little bit, but it looks pretty good. Other than that, see if I can do that with my scissors. I'm pretty happy with that. So, ink those edges. wanting to curl up one with the Mod Podge on it. So I'm going to curl it the other way and hold it for a second. And okay. using my Fabri-Tac glue, I think I'll stick that underneath there again for a second. Do that on. And we don't, I don't, I don't worry about Mod Podging you know, on the inside, you totally could if you wanted to. It would look really nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's the tricky part is picking up your glued piece of paper. Perfect. Wow, I did good. <laughs> and it is a little bit bulky here with both layers. So I like to kind of just pick up the top here and make sure that is adhered really well. That looks great. And I'll glue this top piece on. See, I did ink that, yes. Yeah, this glue just keeps on oozing out if you don't put your lid on it. Be careful with that. I'm getting, I need a new bottle. Getting close to the end here. But isn't this a fun way to use some brown paper sacks? I actually had a couple that I had just kept in my pantry. And I made a couple of prototypes with them. And then I thought, oh, I need to buy a big bag from Walmart so I can make a whole bunch of them. Really fun. They're, and once you've made one, it's really easy, I think make more 
Isn't that so pretty? So much fun. Wouldn't you love to get something like that as a gift? Tucked with a whole bunch of beautiful little ephemera tucked inside. Oh, I forgot to tell you, they do have the Woodland Grove that um, with the with these cute pink oranges or grapefruits, whatever they are. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, what are they? Probably oranges. Um, <clears throat> they do have a big package of ephemera that goes with it at Joanne's. So you could tuck all that stuff in. Okay, now, what I like to do here is different than what other people have done, is to put a, to put a, I don't know if a gusset is the right word, but I make a little bit of a spine there. Because if you don't, you're not going to be able to hold much stuff in there. So I like to, uh, I don't have my square board out, so I'll just use my paper trimmer, which I'm always telling you guys, you know, don't go buy a square board if you don't have one. You can use your paper trimmer for a lot of things. And I want to score it up from, from this flat edge at about four inches. So let's see which way. I guess I need my little flap out here. I love this paper trimmer because it's got like six full inches here. So I don't always have to pull that flap out. And it's got a wire that goes down the center. So you can see exactly where you're cutting. Okay, four inches. So which way do I wanna go? Four inches from here. So, okay, sorry. <laughs> I have to think about things really hard sometimes. My brain just doesn't want to cooperate. Uh, and my bone folder is right here in front of me. <laughs> just going to go down that edge where it would cut. And easy as that. Okay, and then I'm going to do that one more time. Out. I'm going to bring it out about another half. Ooh, a little over a half an inch <clears throat> to make that uh, maybe just a half an inch I don't know and this is whatever you think whatever however big you think you want it to be but it can't be too big or your flaps not gonna fold over in the right spot okay there we go so we've got two score lines on the back there let's see how that looks Fold up one at a time. I'm not gonna totally like crease it down with my bone folder. I'm just gonna fold it lightly. Nothing crazy here. Okay, and there's our little spine or gusset or whatever you call it. I don't know. Okay, looking good. And then it's total, also totally optional whether you want to cover the inside or not. And this is something else that no one else did that I saw. I watched, I think I watched three different videos on this type of thing and no one else covered their inside. But I totally think you need to because you definitely see the back. Unless you really want to see that it is, you know, definitely a paper bag, but... I mean, I think you can see it enough this way. So then I would just cut, I would cut two. I, what I did was use my scraps up. So I just used pieces here and you don't need to go all the way um, in t to this little goalie here because it's not gonna show down in the bottom. So if you've got a scrap that's like three inches, let's see what do I have here. Do, 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 do. Well, yeah, we can use that. Oh, that's actually pretty perfect. But it, yeah, so if you're showing, you know, more than your eighth of an inch here, that's totally okay. That's a perfect scrap that we've got left there from that. So all I'd need to do is trim that right there. Bit. 
and glue that baby on there. That's pretty too, look at that. I do like the contrast here between the two though. Hopefully I'll have enough glue for this project. I just thought these papers were so pretty when I went to Joanne's and found them. I was pretty excited. But oh, I don't know if I told you about that one vintagey paper. Let me show you that again. Okay, make sure it's not on your fold. So it will fold. This paper that I was talking about earlier that I've had in my stash for probably 15 years, I want to say. So it is actually kind of a vintage paper. That's so pretty. It is like a little quilt or something, but it's from, if you've been scrapbooking and as long as I have, maybe you'll remember the girls papery. So pretty. And this is actually the, wait, I can't remember if that's the inside of this paper or not, but love, love that. I'll probably keep that forever. All right, and then we just need one more piece here. Let's see what have I got. Mm. Oh, I guess I, mm -hmm. where's my, oh, I've got plenty of the, Oh, I kind of wish I would have put that there so it would show more because this front piece doesn't show quite as much, but that's okay. And yeah, you don't, like I said, it doesn't need to go all the way to your fold. And I, I've got this little spot here. I think I'm just going to go that far in. So I'm just going to cut it there and there. Oh, let's put my lid on my glue. <clears throat> Oops. Let's see. Let's do this side first. Another good thing about this paper trimmer that I love is that you can fit your whole sheet of paper in there, including the UPC strip. You don't have to cut off your UPC strip to measure it. Looks good there. All this flipping back and forth. Okay, a little more ink. <clears throat> oh, I need to notch that. I just love crafting. It just makes my soul happy. It just makes me feel like everything is right with the world. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and punch this first so I can so I'll be able to see where to punch the other side. Okay, it's just not punching through the paper sack. It will punch the thicker paper. And that's pretty too. So, you know, I think you could get, let's see, that's about eight inches. I think you might be able to get most of a, uh, the whole thing done with one sheet of paper if you wanted to, if you just wanted to use that, the back and the front of this. I think I did do one with just one sheet of paper. I, you might need an extra scrap or something for the for the flap, I'm not sure. Sorry, I don't have the best memory for things like that. Don't have the best memory for anything, who am I kidding? 
How about you guys? My, I have a dear friend from school that she'll talk about things that we did in, you know, junior high. And I'm just like, I'm glad you can remember that because I sure don't. All right. And that is it for the outside. I think I'm going to do a second video for the inside. Isn't that pretty? I love that. And I'll notch that out. We need to let that glue dry for a minute before I do that. But then we'll go ahead and put a, a hole punch through the center of our flap. I'm going to just measure that. You can eyeball it, but it should be about five inches. Yeah. I'll just make a little mark at two and a half. That is right on that leaf. I've got to get it somewhere where I can see it. And you can either, okay, I've done this a couple ways. I've used a regular hole punch just like this. And let's see. For this one, isn't that cute paper? I actually just punched a hole out of a scrap of paper. Let's see if I've got a little scrap here. So I'm going to choose. Uh, <clears throat> I do have a half inch circle punch and then I have my regular hole punch. And so if you punch your hole and then you use your half inch circle punch and line that up make sure it looks really really even all the way around and that makes you your little like uh, hole reinforcement circle and then you can just punch a hole here with your regular circle punch glue that on there and then also I've used some on some of them I just used some of these that I happen to have already in my stash I did look it up to see if I could find them on Amazon and I couldn't so but you can certainly make your own that way and also I like I showed you this one I did with a an eyelet so let's see I think I want an eyelet on this one doesn't look perfectly straight there. So I'll show you how to do that. So using my We Are Memory Keepers eyelet punch. And it's got a bigger hole and a smaller hole there. So we'll use the bigger hole for these eyelets. Got to find my circle. And you want it up a little higher than you think because that is quite a wide Take a look at that. Put it up towards the so that little mark I just made is kind of at the bottom. Ooh, hopefully that was far enough up. And our little eyelets here. These come in a pack of four different colors. I think they might be out of the ones with the gold though. Last time I looked. Okay, got my little eyelet and just set it there. Take your, your punch and you want the side that has the piece sticking out there. That goes in the top of your eyelet. Okay, then you just squeeze it. And it is set just like that. Oh, I love that so much. Okay. Okay, and then you can go ahead and stitch around the edges. I probably won't do that right now for sake of time. This has been a much longer video than I thought it was going to be. But I had to tell you all the good tips that I've figured out as I've gone along here. So, yeah, let's just, okay. 
I've got some, I've got ribbon here we can use. Or, let's see. Okay, so I've got this beautiful, very pale, pale blush pink hug snug ribbon, and I'll try to link that below if I can find it. It's in the color flesh. It's a hundred yards of this. And it's only, I think they're usually around $15. So that ends up being, what, 15 cents a yard, which is a great price. Or I've got this bolt of um, macrame cord, which I love. It's really thick. I've used in some of them. So I can link that below too. It's like $6 for this huge, like 250 yards, 220 yards, something like that. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, I should have stitched that first because now I'm not gonna be able to get around that. So that's the only problem there. <laughs> but, okay, where did I just set that ribbon? Here it is. And there's so many ways you you could um to close make a closure. You could use magnets. You could use just some Velcro here. You could wrap uh, a ribbon around it. Okay, you could attach it here and then wrap your ribbon around a couple of times and put a charm on the end of your ribbon and then you could just tuck the ribbon in and your charm would kind of hold it in place. There's so many different ideas you can cut out. I've seen somebody did like two circles out of paper, glued different couple layers together, right? Two circles, and then wrap your string around those two circles. So I think that would be fun to do too. I was going to try that, but I didn't get around to it. Maybe in my journal one. Maybe next time. <laughs> okay, so I think I'll just use a piece of this ribbon. And I believe it was about a yard that I used. Probably add a couple inches just to be safe. Whoops. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> My scissors got like totally stuck, stuck in the center of the scissors. And yeah, just real quickly, I would... Uh, let's see, we need... To, I want to double it up, so I'm going to do like a tie like you would do through uh uh gosh I can't even think I guess like a bookmark or like I did on the little tag that I tucked in the little pocket with butterfly now I want one end to be longer than the other one maybe six inches longer or something like that and then I'm just going to try to get that through there and stick the two uh, ends through that hole through that circle of ribbon and pull it okay. pretty simple try to even that out a little bit Okay, and then so you've got a long end and a short end, and I'm going to wrap the long end underneath here to, to tie it and come around the top, and then I can make my bow. It looks like I'm going to need to trim it a bit, but that's okay. This ribbon is very inexpensive, and there you have it. Trim that ribbon down a bit, and don't trim it too much. You want a little extra because once you fill it up, then it's going to be, you know, more bulky. And yeah, I have a couple of ideas that you might want to plan ahead before my next video. I'll try to get out, that out really soon to show you how to do the accordion on the inside. I just didn't want to make this video so long. Besides tea, day, tea dyed papers, if you don't want to do that, you can use old book pages. This one... I did music pages. I think that turned out gorgeous. You can go to the, your local thrift store and find some old books. And then this one I showed you, I did use, just used that linen paper. I'll link that below. It's really pretty. 
just added a little ink around the edges of that. Let's see this one. Lots more book pages. Really cute. But I also found a couple things that I'm excited to try. Which is just some craft paper. Some lightweight craft paper. It's the exact same color as the paper bags. So I thought that might be neat to put on the inside. And I'll link that below. And I also got some... some I bought some papers that look like they're tea dyed so and they are printed on the front and the back so I thought that was really cool I'm gonna try doing some pockets with those so I'll link that below too comes in several different types of papers so that's really cool alrighty thanks so much for watching sorry it's such a long video I love what I do and I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.